every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, what is the will of the Father? To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? You see, Kenneth Copeland is going to go before God and he's going to say, Oh, but God, didn't I prophesy that that cancer patient was going to be healed if he gave me $1,000? Pat Robertson is going to go before God and say, I prophesied that there was a woman in a pink recliner uh, who was going to be granted healing from her broken wrist. The, the Pope is going to say, Oh God, don't you know that I'm the vicar of Christ? I'm God's representative on earth. That I'm infallible. And Jesus Christ is going to say, You're going to burn like a sausage in hell, boy. And in thy name have cast out devils. Rodney Howard Brown is going to go before God and he's going to say, Oh God, that I cast devils out of them and turn them into laughing, cackling jackals. You know, the International House of Prayer and Bethel Church are going to go before him and say, Oh, don't you know that these people who walked on the stage acted normal, that I cast the devil out of them, and that's why they twitch like a seizure case? You know, actually, he cast the devil into them. But that's how foolish these people are. They're going to go before God and say that. And in my name done many wonderful works. The Mother Teresa is going to go before God and say, I went to India and, and, and fed those people and gave them medicine. You know what God's going to say to them? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You know what, Mother Teresa? You're going to burn in hell because you taught another mediator, the Pope. And you're going to burn in hell because you taught a word salvation. Kenneth Copeland, you're going to burn in hell because you told people they'd lose their salvation for questioning your lying signs and wonders and for fleecing widows and for fleecing cancer patients. Bethel Church, you're going to burn in hell because you cast devils into people uh, to pop a rating on television. You're going to burn in hell. Depart from me, I never knew you. Hi, man. Amen. The following message has been brought to you by Independent Baptist Church of Tampa Bay. BaptistTampaBay.com Recap, where we left off last time, uh, we're preaching through the Sermon on the Mount, which came right after Jesus Christ gave an ordination sermon found in Matthew chapter 10 on uh, the ordination sermon for the 12 disciples, okay? So in the Sermon on the Mount, we find contradictory statements seemingly, like, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Wait, isn't being blessed being rich in spirit? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to a human ear, right? You know, blessed are they that mourn. How are you blessed when you're mourning? That's, that's horrible. Mourning is misery. You know, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Uh, if you're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, doesn't that mean you don't have righteousness? What's going on here? These are seeming contradictions here, right? Amen? Are they seeming contradictions? But... The thing is, as we learn with so much of complicated sayings in the King James Bible, uh, they're not meant to salvation text. They're maybe not always meant to be taken super literally, but they're there to draw you uh, to a focus on eternal things. They're there to uh, refocus you on spiritual things because that's what we're supposed to focus on, that which is lovely, that which is good. Uh, that which is righteous. We're supposed to focus always on spiritual things because, hey, this world is not our own, amen? This world is not our own, our home. You know, we're just pilgrims passing through. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. You see, we're not supposed to envy the world's riches. And whenever the world is rewarded for unrighteousness, you see right here, we're not supposed to envy the treasures of the worldly because you see in this world you know what they have their rewards don't envy that because you know what's going to happen their rewards are going to burn up and they're going to burn in hell but bless god if, if you're focused on investing in spiritual things if your treasure is spiritual things you know what you know, what your treasure is going to last forever because this world's going to pass away but praise god jesus christ is going to last forever hey man right there Hi, man. All right, so let's start. Resume in Matthew 5 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. 
So first off, let's go ahead and define some terms here. Meekness, meekness. What is meekness? Hey, does anybody know what meekness means? Meekness, okay. Meekness, it, it, it means you're humble. It means you're lowly, you see? You know, that means, think of it this way. You know, what one to you uh, if you think you're something when you are nothing, okay? You see, when you're meek, that means that you would esteem others above yourself. When you're meek, that means that you would not hold yourself in high esteem, but rather, who do you hold in high esteem? Anybody but yourself, because you're not filled with pride. You don't have a high opinion of yourself. You recognize your state as a sinner. Hey, but I'm going to tell you something right now, okay? Jesus Christ wants us to be meek. Jesus Christ wants us to be lowly because we're blessed when they're that way. You know, that doesn't make any sense. How, how are you blessed if you're humble and lowly? You know, wouldn't you think you'd be depressed all the time if you don't have a high opinion of yourself? By the way, did you know that, that people with low IQs are shown to have the highest egos and the highest self-esteem? Did you know that? Did, and seriously, did you know that? It's because they're too dumb to know how bad they are. And then, like, people with super high IQs have the highest depression levels because, quite simply, they're very aware of all their problems. Now, that being said, now, tr chances are if someone's very high IQ, they're going to be wise in their own conceit and not get saved. But sometimes those people, if they're not given over to that reprobate mind with worldly philosophies, that person's going to be more receptive to the gospel because, you know, think of it like the bell curve. That's, you know, you get, in, you get into super high IQs, you know, it's like highly functioning autism where you can't really relate with the world around you. And those are the people that are just low-hanging fruit for the gospel. Basically, if you find someone in a church who has a very high income, they're probably going to be like highly functioning autistic. Not that's a bad thing. You know what? Jesus, you know, Jesus said we're a peculiar people. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So also, what does it mean to inherit? Because it says that, that the uh, meek uh, will, uh, shall inherit the earth. So inherit means that it's, it's not earned. It's handed down, okay? So if you think of it this way. If, you, if, if daddy works his whole life in, in, to, be, to build a great farm property, and then at the end of his life he hands it down to you, did you earn that? No, you probably sat twiddling your thumbs watching a bunch of Mexicans pick fruit trees, amen? Mm -hmm. You know what? That's true right there. But you know what? When daddy hands that, that thing down to you, you didn't, all you did was inherit that thing. You see, all you did was inherit it. And in the same way, with, with the earth, we inherit the earth. Because we're meek and we're lowly, Jesus Christ gives us the earth. Okay? And now also, what does it mean to inherit the earth, define the earth? It's not saying that because you're meek and you're humble and lowly that you're going to be a multi-billionaire and you're going to own Amazon or you're going to own Trump Tower or anything like that. No, no, no. This is speaking of prophecy. You see, every, you see, Jesus Christ is going to burn up this current earth and come back and recreate it and have a millennial reign. That's the earth. That's the kingdom that, that you're going to inherit. There's going to be a perfected new earth after the kingdom that's going to last forever. You're going to inherit that. As far as inheriting the current earth, that's not what this is talking about, okay? And also, why do the meek inherit the earth? Why the meek? Turn with me over to Luke's <coughs> Gospel, uh, chapter 18, okay? Because, uh, remember, Matthew, Matthew's Gospel was written to the Jews, okay? Matthew's Gospel was not specifically written to the Jews, but it was a very Jewish-oriented book. He was it was, you know, all scriptures given by inspiration of God. You know, so that means all means all. It's all for us. But Matthew's, go Matthew's gospel emphasized the Jews. Emphasized that Jesus was the king of the Jews. Emphasized Christ's message to the Jews. Okay? So, now that you're with me in Luke 18, let me read verse 11. The Pharisee stood and prayed uh, thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican, that's a tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. 
So Jesus goes on. You know what? That man's prayer was an abomination, as we're going to see later. Uh, but, you know, Jesus liked the prayer of the publican because he said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner, okay? You see that, that, that traitor to Israel who was a tax collector for Rome? Jesus liked his prayer. Uh, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. You see, how often do we go out uh, soul winning and somebody's like, you know, oh, I'm saved because I go to church. Oh, yeah, well, I'm not going to go to hell because I've never killed anybody or I've never stolen anything. You see... Uh, oh, God, I know I'm safe because I'm not like those sinners. You see right there? That, that, that's, that's being wise in your conceit. That's why eventually the Jews were given over to blindness in mass. Because quite, turn over with me to Romans chapter 11 because we're going to talk about that. Because that's where the problem began with the Jews, amen? amen? It's because the Jews were wise in their own conceit. They thought themselves to be something when they were nothing, Amen? And because of that, they blinded themselves, and God allowed them to have pleasure in their own delusion by giving them over to that reprobate mind to believe that that lie that they prefer over the truth. They worship the creature over the creator, as it talks about in Romans 1, and that creature was themselves. I mean, like, that's why they made the temple sacrifices go away with the Talmudism stuff, is because now they think that they're their own messiahs, and they're waiting for another messiah, which is going to be Antichrist. Now we know two, th you know, we know one third of them are going to be saved, you know. But you know, I mean, there's going to be a great purging of the threshing floor before that. Man, God's going to clean some house and over that seven year period. Amen. Uh, Romans chapter eleven. We'll start reading in verse six. I'm just going to preach through it with y'all, okay? And if by grace, this is talking about salvation, then it is. Then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be works. Then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So think of it this way. Are you trusting in a pedophile priest behind a veil uh, uh, to make you say eight Hail Marys and to say he absolved your sin? That is a work you're going to burn in hell. Are you saying, oh, I never killed anybody. I never stole anything. I'm good. You know what? You, that, that, that's adding to grace. You're going to burn in hell. Are you saying that, oh, well, I turned away from all my sins? You know what? If you had an intellectual turning away from your sins to recognize that you were a sinner, that you were wrong and you needed a Savior, congratulations. That's repentance unto salvation. But if you're saying that I did the act of turning away from all my sins, if your definition of repentance is a complete turning from sin in all areas of your life, you're going to burn like a Cheshire sausage in, in, in an 800 degree grill. Yeah, hey, look up in here, buddy. Hey, I got some good news for you. You don't have to worry about anything if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. You know you're a sinner. You know that you're insufficient. But Jesus Christ died on the cross for you. You don't trust in any good work of your own. You don't trust in any ritual of your own. You don't trust in any preacher. You don't trust in any church. Jesus Christ died on the cross at a horrible criminal's death because we're all criminals against God's law. But you know what, buddy? Jesus Christ died on the cross, paid our criminal debt. He rose from the dead on the third day. And, uh, and then, you know why, he, you know why, buddy, he rose on the, on the third day, buddy? Because he defeated death for us. You know, when we who are Christians, uh, when we die, if we're saved by trusting in Jesus alone, we're just sleeping. You know what? Uh, we're going to wake one day when, when, when God puts our bodies back together and we get to rule with him forever. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. So, hey, I'm going to tell you something else here. Uh, Romans uh, chapter 11 and verse 7 reads, What then? Hath Israel not obtained that which he seeketh for? But the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. You know what? Who... Hey, I'm going to ask you a question right now. Who obtained salvation? Those who believed. Yes. Amen. Yes. Right. Christ is the elect. It's one person. We're elect by believing in the one who was elected. You know, think of it this way. Hey, there's only one person elected president of these United States. Amen. Right. And it's not Joe Biden because he didn't win. But I want to tell you something right now, bless God. You know what? When a president comes into office, he brings in a cabinet. You see? And people, people who vote for him, that's their president. You know what? When, when President Donald J. Trump, the rightful president of these United States, came into office, he brought a cabinet with him. 
You see, there was only one president elected in the same way. Jesus Christ is the elect. And we put our faith in him. And we're a part of his cabinet. We're a part of his service. We're a part of his secret priesthood. And, you know, which Jews have obtained the election? The ones who accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. Right. You know, the people who rejected Jesus Christ as, the, as their Messiah, they were grafted out of that olive tree of Israel. And us wild branch Gentiles, by faith, we were grafted into, the, into that tree of Israel. Now, our inheritance is not going to be in the land of greater Israel during the kingdom. Because, you know what? That's a promise that was made to the physical seed of Abraham who received that, who received that reward by faith. That's we're, our rewards are going to be somewhere else. But you know what? Those those Jews who receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, they will receive that reward in the Holy Land. Okay, uh, verse eight. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber. You know that means think of it this way. Uh, uh, you know, that means these idiots who sleep in church and never get saved. Hey, that's why we shout in church. Hey, that's why we have a lively origin, uh, church service. You see, I don't want you to be asleep in church. I got good news for you, and I don't want you to miss it. Hi, hey, man. Amen. Eyes that they should not see, ears that they uh, should not hear unto this day. You see, you know, that's why... You know, Isaiah 53 is the forbidden book, is the forbidden chapter of the Old Testament of Judaism because it testifies of Christ. You know, that's why, you know, whenever you try to give the, the gospel to a Jew, oh, blah, 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 I can't hear you, blah, blah, blah. You see, they don't want to hear it. And even if they pretend they're hearing you, all they're, all they're thinking is, blasphemy, 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 blasphemy. You know, they're thinking it in their head. Okay? You see, or they can't even see what's clearly in front of them. You see, all that Old Testament typology, the ritual law that was fulfilled in Christ, I mean, they may as well just be walking around with this in front of them. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. Oh, I walked into a wall. You know what I mean? Seriously. But they're not going to just walk into a wall. They're going to walk into hell. Amen? Amen? You see, they're blinded. They can't see anything. They can't see the Old Testament typology. They can't hear the word of God with spiritual ears because they so hatefully rejected Christ that they're blinded. I mean, the Talmud is blasphemy. The Kabbalah is witchcraft. And quite frankly, why is the seven-year tribulation going to happen? It's because the, the, the nation of Israel, that counterfeit nation of Israel, is so utterly wicked. Their Kabbalah and their Talmud are so utterly wicked that Jesus Christ is going to have to take seven years to purge out two-thirds of them who are just totally reprobate. Amen? Amen? And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Uh, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. And, and I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? So the, that's a real question. That's a real question. You know that? They're blinded. They can't see this stuff. Their, their eyes are darkened. I mean, you see, they're, they're literally walking through a church house. Literally, I mean, they're walking through a church house, just walking into everything. But, but, they, but they can never receive anything that they find because they don't even know what it is. But did it happen so that they should fall? Did God just look down at them like a Calvinist and say, I predestined you to hell to give myself glory? You know, hey, God, hey, hey, we're King James here, amen? Yes. We're King yes. James here. My Bible says God forbid. Amen. It doesn't say let it not be. Amen. Who let it not be, fool? Bless God. Let God forbid. God let it not be. God forbid. He doesn't hate the Jews. God is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right. Amen. amen? But rather, through, th through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them unto jealousy. You know what? I'm going to throw something out here. You see, Jesus Christ pro uh, gave the prophecy to Isaiah that he was going to be a light to the Gentiles. Amen? Yes. And you know what else? When we get, how, do you, how, how do you get Jews saved? That's a question. How do you get Jews saved? The gospel. The gospel. But even more than that, you see, it, why do the Jews hate Christians so much? Because they're green with envy. Mm -hmm. It's because subconsciously they know 
that we got what they passed up on, which was the Messiah. And if you really want to make them jealous, go get saved so you can get raptured. And then, you know, you know, when we're out of here, you know, all these Jews are going to be sitting around, and some of them are going to be like, oh, wow, those, those Christians, man, I'm jealous of those Christians. We're going to have to go through this because, because they believed and we didn't. That will really provoke them to jealousy. Amen? Amen. All right. So also, uh, how else uh, are the meek blessed? Remember, uh, in the book of Isaiah, it says their own righteousness is but filthy rags before the Lord. Can you imagine taking filthy, dirty rags of human waste and then presenting them to an all-holy God and saying, this is my righteousness to get me into heaven? You're crippled too high for crutches if you go before an all-holy God and say, I'm worthy, I'm worthy. Hey, let me elaborate on that a little bit, okay? Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 8. For by grace, you see, grace is an unmerited favor, an undeserved mercy. For by grace... Are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves? It is the gift of God. Hey, look up in here. You can't earn it. You, you, you couldn't go. You didn't earn it by saying a sinner's prayer. You didn't earn it by going to church. You didn't earn it by going soul winning. You didn't earn it by giving money. Uh, you didn't earn it by being a good person. Uh, oh, by the way, something out there. You think it's just Jews who think they're saved by their ethnicity? Hey, you're crippled too high for crutches, buddy. Hey, look up in here. I got some news for you. When we went out street preaching uh, uh, down at the Greek Orthodox Church on Easter, you know, a lady came over. She wanted to make sure we weren't going to interrupt the service. We weren't going to. You know, I said, well, I got a more important question for you. If you were to die today, uh, are you 50, 75, or 100% sure you're going to heaven? She's like, uh, well, I'm sure I'm going to heaven. Oh, oh, really? That's great. What makes you say that? Well, I'm Greek. That's yourselves. God, God's not going to send you to heaven because you're a part of the oldest church in history that some Roman emperor decided to create and rename all the Greek gods after, uh, after martyrs of the faith. You're not saved by your ethnicity, Greeks. You're not saved because you opened a successful business and gave a bunch of people jobs as a waiter or a cook. You're not saved because uh, you're a Catholic and you got dunked in dirty or sprinkled in dirty bath water as a baby. You're not saved because you drink wicked liquor once a year and, and, and call it the blood of Christ. You're not saved because you go to confession. You're not saved because you, because you even believe you even attend the, a Bible believing Baptist church like this. You know what? If you don't receive the word of God in your heart and recognize you're a sinner, you're going to burn even crispier. Uh, you're going to burn in hell even crispier uh, than the Catholic who did it in ignorance because you're he's sitting here under the truth, warning you you're going to burn in hell if you don't know you're a sinner and receive Christ's free gift of uh, salvation that he paid your criminal debt. Amen? Amen. Uh, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know what? If you go before the proverbial judgment seat of Christ and you say, I deserve to go to heaven because of anything at all that I did just as I said, you are boasting before God. How foolish and conceited are you? Turn over with me to Matthew chapter 7, okay? Because this is good preaching right here. Because how stupid are you? How conceited are you? How foolish are you to go before the Father and all holy God who would, ha who would send his own son to die, or suffer hell on a cross, to pay your criminal debt, and you would go before God and say, my righteousness gets me in, I'm good. How dare you go to a soul winner trying to give you a gospel tract, trying to give you a soul winner presentation to pull you out of hell and say, I'm good. How dare you, you fool! Watch this, watch this. Matthew 7, verse 21. Uh, not everyone that saith unto me, this is the words of Jesus, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You see, uh, that's that 1 Corinthians 15. Some people believe the historical account of the gospel and they believe in vain. Let's read about it. Uh, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What is the will of the Father? To believe in to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have a whole book, uh, John, the John's Gospel that was written so that you may believe. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? You see what's going to happen right there? 
You see, Kenneth Copeland is going to go before God and he's going to say, Oh, but God, didn't I prophesy that that cancer patient was going to be healed if he gave me $1,000? Pat Robertson is going to go before God and say, Oh, God, don't you know that I prophesied that there was a woman in a pink recliner uh, who was going to be granted healing from her broken wrist? You know what? That happened right there. That's truth right there. Don't you know that Paula White is going to go before God and say, Well, don't you know that I prophesied? Don't you know? The, the, the Pope is going to say, Oh God, don't you know that I, got, that I got all kinds of special revelations? Don't you know that I'm the vicar of Christ? Don't you know that I'm God's representative on earth? The Pope is going to go before God and say, Don't you know that I'm infallible? And Jesus Christ is going to say, You're going to burn like a sausage in hell, boy. Uh, and then I will profess, you know, uh, uh, you see, the prophesied, and in thy name have cast out devils. You see, Rodney Howard Brown is going to go before God and he's going to say, Oh God, don't you know that I cast devils out of them and turned them into laughing, cackling jackals? You know, the International House of Prayer and Bethel Church are going to go before him and say, Oh, don't you know that these, tw that, 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 I, that these people who walked on the stage acted normal, that I cast the devil out of them, and that's why they twitch like a seizure case? You know, actually, he cast the devil into them. But that's how foolish these people are. They're going to go before God and say that. And in my name done many wonderful works. Don't you know that Mother Teresa is going to go before God and say, don't you know that I went to India and, and, and fed those people and gave them medicine? You know what God's going to say to them? You know what? You know what God's going to say to them? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You know what, Mother Teresa? You're going to burn in hell because you taught another mediator, the Pope. And you're going to burn in hell because you taught a work salvation. Kenneth Copeland, you're going to burn in hell because you told people they'd lose their salvation for questioning your lying signs and wonders and for fleecing widows and for fleecing cancer patients. Rodney, uh, Internet, Bethel Church, you're going to burn in hell because you cast devils into people uh, to pop a rating on television. You're going to burn in hell. Depart from me, I never knew you. Hi, man. Amen. Amen. All right. Also, how to be blessed now. You see, yes, Jesus Christ died so you can have life, but he also died so you can have it more abundantly. You know, Joel Osteen is a fool. You ain't going to live your best life now. Your best life is going to be an eternity with Jesus Christ. But how do you live a blessed life now? Uh, I like what Ephesians 1.13 says. This is how it all starts. Where it says in Ephesians 1.13, you know, the Calvinists don't like this too much. In whom ye also trusted, after ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of, unto, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after ye believed, ye were sealed by the Holy Ghost, uh, the Holy Spirit of promise. You see, the Calvinists say that regeneration precedes faith. No, it says right here, you heard the gospel, you believed and trusted the gospel, then you were sealed by the Holy Ghost. Regeneration comes after faith, buddy. And also, by the way, John MacArthur, who is a hardcore works-based salvationist, who's a wicked false prophet, you know what John MacArthur says? You know what John MacArthur says about that text in Matthew 7 that we just read? You see, John MacArthur looks at that and he goes, instead of saying salvation is not of works, it's by faith, John MacArthur looks at that and says, Oh, well, Jesus said, depart from me, I never knew you, because you didn't do enough good works. John, hey, and my Bible says, if any come unto you and preach another gospel, let them be accursed. John MacArthur, be accursed. Hey, man. Amen. Hey, man. All right. So uh, also, look with me. I'm going, but don't think that we're, you know, but don't think that like these people that we run into out street preaching think, you know, that you're saved so that you can go out and live a wicked life. Don't be like these people you know, who what you know, the judge not crowd, you know, the, the, the lascivious grace crowd, okay? Because these people are gonna send you straight to hell, you know that? Because they have a they have a conversion. They believe in the historical count of the gospel, but they don't believe that you know, my Bible says let God be true and every man a liar. They don't have biblical repentance. You see, they don't they disagree with the Bible that preaches against sodomy. 
They disagree with the Bible that preaches against fornication. They disagree with the, with the King James Bible that preaches against wicked liquor, that preaches against pride, that preaches against immodesty, that preaches against feminism, that preaches against, uh, uh, against false idols and false religions. Uh, you see, they are going to burn in hell with the greater judgment to whom much is given, much is expected. You see, they know the historical account of the gospel, but they believed in vain because they never got under conviction. You see, Romans chapter 10 and verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, my Bible says in, in, John, in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9 that, Hey, buddy, hey, I got some good news for you, buddy. Let me tell you what Jesus done for you, okay? Hey, I got some good news for you. You're going to like this. You see what Jesus did for you? Jesus Christ said, if you confess your sins unto him, he's faithful to forgive. You know, that means, you know, whenever you're disobeying your parents, you know, that means that whenever you're uh, sinning, you see, Jesus Christ, if you confess to him that you're sinning, you know what? I got some good news for you, brethren. He's faithful to forgive. You're not saved so that you can keep on sinning and have your wickedness covered by the blood. If you think that, you're going to burn in hell. That's why we need to emphasize conviction and emphasize biblical repentance, which is not a which is not a stop sinning to be saved, which is a confession that you are a sinner, that you're wrong and Jesus Christ is right. You see that you have a conviction of your sin, that you can conviction of your sinful state, and you put your faith in Jesus unto salvation. That's biblical repentance, not the act of turning from your sins. Like if you if seriously. If you think, if you know the Bible preaches against wicked liquor and you, and, and you disagree with that, you're not going to get saved, okay? You're just not. Because you're not, that's not biblical repentance. You think God's a liar. You see, you're, 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 you're putting your faith in your own pride, okay? You watch out for that crowd. Street preaching, and I'm going to say this right here. The people who would say I'm preaching a works-based salvation, we're preaching a repent of your sins gospel right now. They're, you know what? You know why they say that? Because they scoff against street preaching. They make fun of street preaching. They rail against street preaching. And you know why their theology is rot, just dirty, rotten? You want to know why they preach a lascivious grace? You want to know why, they're, why their so-called converts never show up for church? That they can rack up thousands of people in, in, in confessions of faith? But they, you know, oh, thousands save, but five of, them, five of them show up for church. You know why that is? It's because uh, they... Don't understand conviction. They don't understand uh, the, the sin nature. You see, even their sermons very often are going to preach against everybody else's sin, but not your own sin. Yeah, you know, sodomites are an abomination unto God. You know, but but are you but are you getting off uh, seeing some lesbo on the television set smooching? Are you? That's your sin. Are you getting off in line at the Walmart, seeing some woman in leggings, seeing some woman in, short, in Daisy Duke shorts? That's your sin, boy. You know what? They preach against everybody else's sin. But you see right here? Watch out for those. Street preaching is going to fix your theology real quick. Because repentance unto salvation is going to be that you recognize when the Bible says something is a sin, that you confess yourself, that you confess to God, that you committed that sin. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen? Amen. All right, so I want to get that out of the way there. So, uh, hey, let's go back to Matthew chapter 5 and uh, verse 6 because, you know what? I'm just going to throw this out there right now because uh, how do you get that blessing is the question. How do you cash in on, on the blessings that come from being meek? Verse 6 answers the question, Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen? Amen. So, hey, I got some good news for you, brethren, right here. So, uh, uh, how do you be filled with righteousness? You see, it says that you're, that you're blessed uh, if you hunger and thirst after righteousness. How are you going to get that filling of righteousness? You know, my Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. You know, how dare anybody say that they're good? There's none good but God. Amen? Amen. You know what? It is the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. It's not the, your own righteousness. It's Jesus Christ's righteousness in you. 
You see, there's none righteous, no, not one. Amen. So first off, hey, brethren, you got to get hungry for that righteousness. Amen. Hey, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hey, I got some good news for you, brethren. You see right here? you got to get hungry for the Word of God. Hey, turn over with me to John chapter 6. Amen? You know what? you got to get hungry for the Word of God. You see, you know what? If you eat bread, you're going to get indigestion. You're going to get bloated. And then, and then about two hours later, you're going to be hungry again. You see what? This King James Bible is the food of everlasting life. It, it, you're never going to be hungry again. You're never going to need any other book again. Hey, bless God. This book is going to fill you up. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. John 6.35 says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh unto me uh, shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. You see, Jesus Christ is the bread of life. You see, that's why it's so sorry, so pathetic, so straight out of hell. If you're going out and you're having a so-called food pantry ministry, if you're having a so-called homeless ministry, and you're feeding these people just so that they can spend their money on drugs, and even if they are genuinely poor and need the help, that's a good thing to help people. But don't you ever forget, brethren, that after Jesus fed the 5,000 families, bless God, Jesus had to turn away from some Pharisees who came to him asking him for free food because they weren't there for the bread of life, bless God. They were there because they wanted free stuff. They were there uh, uh, for a show. They didn't appreciate the bread of the word. You see something right here? Like we went street preaching one time and some drunkard walks up to us and goes, well, why don't you, you're wasting your time. Why don't you go feed the homeless? You know why? It's because what good is it if we go feed the homeless and they burn in hell? Man liveth not by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. You hunger for righteousness. That means you're going to hunger for the King James Bible. Amen. Amen. Also, hey, thirsting for righteousness. Turn over a page with me to John 7. Because you know what? you got to get empty before you can get full, brethren. you got to get empty of uh, everything in the world so you can get full of God. Amen. Hey, look at John 7, 37, where it says... In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus uh, stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake uh, of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. i got some good news for you, brethren. Your righteousness is not the source of that living water. You know that? Jesus, the Holy Ghost, that being sealed by the Holy Ghost, being baptized by the Holy Ghost, bless God, that, the whole, that you be, your body being the temple of the living God, is, is that, that's what that source of living water. You see, you, you, you don't just want to be baptized by the Holy Ghost. You know, hey, you know what? You're saved by faith. I don't want to just punch my ticket and know I'm going. I want to go first class, enjoy the ride, amen? I like the idea of enjoying the ride to heaven. You see that? That source of everlasting water, abiding in the Spirit of God, abiding in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you something. It's a blessing. It's a treasure. You know what? Hey, you got to have your fellowship with God, amen? You know, I like you read the Bible. You see, that's God speaking to you. You know, you pray. That is you speaking to God. You see, you walking with God daily, hating your sin, obeying God. Hey, that's you living with God daily, amen? Hey, uh, and also, why, do why don't people discern the Bible? You notice we're seeing all kinds of weird, false doctrines out there nowadays? Y'all been noticing that, amen? You know, my Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.14, I'm paraphrasing here, that the things of God are foolishness to the natural man because they're spiritually discerned. Why don't people understand the Bible? Turn with me over to Psalm 119 while you're turning there. People don't understand the Bible either because they're not saved. Therefore, they come up with a crazy work salvation. They come up with a crazy uh, alternative view of God. That's a Jesus that is not the God of the Bible. 
They come up with extra mediators, extra works, extra rituals. They go through the Bible looking for strange new doctrines to prove their stupidity because they're not saved. Amen? Amen. And also, you know what? If, you, if you're dead, you know, you can quench the Holy Ghost. You know, you can't blaspheme the Holy Ghost if you're saved. But you can quench the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hey, you know what? You can be so dead in your sins that you think drinking wicked liquor is okay. You can be so dead in your sins that you think a, a woman wearing leggings and yoga pants is okay. You can, you can be so dead in your sins that you think a man wearing skinny jeans, sissy britches, and a pink blouse is okay. You can be so dead in your sins that perverted sexual innuendo jokes from The Office or Hollywood movies is okay. You, if you grieve the Holy Ghost and quench the Holy Ghost enough, you can be so dead in your sins that everything you say about the Bible is complete and utter stupidity because all you do is you occasionally pick up a Bible, do a Google search for no other reason than to find some reprobate heretic who will give you a reason to believe in a false God that loves your sin as much as you do. Hi, man! Amen. All right. So what's the cure for that? What's the cure? Psalm 119.104 Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. God is love. You Baptists are hateful. You soul winners are hateful. You hellfire preachers are hateful. I love it when people say that to me. Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. You know what? They don't study to show themselves approved. Hey, I still got a King James Bible, so they didn't change this. Study to show thyself approved, bless God. We study the Bible. You know, we, even though we're sinners and we fail, we still recognize, bless God, that, we, that we're supposed to hate our sins. We chase after righteousness. We study the Bible and we love the Bible. Through the Bible we get understanding. And therefore, you know what? We hate the Pope because he sends people to hell. We hate TBM because it sends people to hell. We hate Buddha and Muhammad because they send people to hell. We hate, uh, we hate fornication because it's against God. We hate sodomy because it's against God. We hate wicked liquor uh, because it's against God. It is the gateway to every sin. We hate every false... Oh, by the way, why do we hate these modern Bible perversions? Because they're perversions of God's Word. We, we love the King James Bible and we get understanding, therefore we hate every false way. You know what? It's not, like he, it's not like you as a Christian are called to love sin just a little less than you love God. No, sir. No, ma'am. Quite frankly, what this means is, oh, God, I hate them who hate thee. I hate them with a perfect hatred. You hate sin. You hate the wicked television set. You hate false gospels. You hate false religions. You hate modern Bible perversion because you love God. Amen right there? Amen. Amen. You know what? It's not your righteousness. Because I'm going to tell you something. Don't ever think that you're a righteous person. Because that's not righteousness. That's self-righteousness. If you're a lost person and you're self-righteous, you're going to burn in hell. If you're a Christian and you're self-righteous, you know what? Pride goeth before destruction just the same. God's not going to take your salvation away from being self-righteous. But bless God, you better check yourself because you're heading for a fall. You see, you know, my Bible says that Jesus Christ will chasten and scourge all true believers. My Bible says that even the, the even brethren can commit sins unto death. You better check yourself if you're getting self-righteous, because that goeth before a fall.